Hello everyone, Anthony is here and today I want to talk about relighting with AI. AI relighting, IC light, not only does the relighting but also does pretty much a retouching job, a really nice retouching job, professional level and you can fit it with any crappy photo or, or yourself, somebody else, your family. If you're not familiar with ConfiUI, which I'll be using in this video, please check out my introduction to ConfiUI. The link is in the description. Uh, the benefit of ConfiUI is that you can run it on basically almost any gaming laptop at home for free without uploading files to the clouds, without sharing your data. I will also share project files on my Gumroad for free. Also, uh, check it down below. And a current update on Isolite, there is Isolite version 1, which we will be using, and there is Isolite version 2, which is only available for non-commercial use, and it's not available to use with ConfUI. It's actually have to pay for it on their website. So that kind of kills everything. Like You can't really use it for much, and it's not really convenient to use. However, if you want to check it out, you can also go check it out down below. It does, it does give a better result, and I hope in the future you will be able to just swap a model and have it running. Open ConfUI, go to Manager, go to Custom Notes Manager, and look for IC Lite. Here we have IC Lite from Kijai and IC Lite Native from Hu Lei. Both of them are actually quite useful, so I will install both packs in this particular tutorial. I will be mostly using a pack from KJ. Then look for KJ nodes. They will be also useful. Some utility nodes. Let's click install. And then we need to go and restart ConfUI. Reload the page. Then we need to download Isolite models. Go model manager, search for Isolite. And we have three of them, but we only need two. I would even say only need one. FC stands for foreground conditional. This one is foreground and background. And then FCON, what I read in documentation, is slightly worse than the first one. So I don't even know why it's included. I've only been using FC, but we can download both. Click on install and wait for it to download. During the download, you can check the command line and see the progress. After download is finished, we don't need to restart ConfiUI, we just need to refresh page. Just go click refresh or Ctrl R the hotkey. Now we have updated ConfiUI with all the models. I will start with the default workflow. I will just change the checkpoint from standard 1.5 to Epic Photogasm. The link is in the description if you want to download and install it. So Ctrl drag, move the prompts. And I want to remain this prompt to positive and this one to negative. I will also right click and assign a different color. This will be green and this will be red. We need to introduce a node called load and, uh, and apply isolate. Our checkpoint model will go through the load and apply isolate and to the case sampler model. Second node we need to add is isolate conditioning. Here we will drag our positive prompt, our negative prompt, and the VAE. And then that will go through to the case sampler, the positive and the negative will connect there. So we're creating this little pipe. You can see here in load and apply isolate, it automatically picked out the model I had downloaded, FC. In the isolate conditioning, we have two inputs. One is for foreground, another one is for optional background. I tried to add background images and they never really looked well, so I just stopped doing that. We can always prompt some kind of background in the prompt, in the positive prompt. You can also see in the empty latent output, this is the same empty latent image node as we have down here. So I can plug it in like this or just keep existing empty latent image node down there. I will keep it there because this particular setup will be used to add lights to our final image. It is better to keep this output open. Let's bring the image. I will use load image node picking up an image from previous videos of mine. I will upload something I'm very familiar with, my selfie. And it is good to have a resize node, image resize. I'll go the image resize essential. You can see I have a few other node packs installed. They often do the same thing as other node packs. 
pick it here. Then I need to encode this into a latent image. I will look for VAE encode. Connect my pixels here and the VAE, I can drag it all the way from there. And this is our input for the isolate conditioning. This is a basic setup. Now I need to go input something like uh, a lighting I want to try. I will go with uh, daylight, press control enter and let this network to run. You can see the result in our save image output. I can also press Q and see the result on gallery on the left. I've typed in foggy morning and I run, I run two prompts. Every time it will be slightly different. If you want to see a lot of different variations, just go here and type in a bigger batch count and press Ctrl Enter and it will run through a bunch of different variations. Some of them will be horrible, some of them will be quite fine to work with and cherry pick. I really like to do image comparison. For that, I will go to custom nodes and look for RG3 Comfy. You want to install this pack, I go back, close this, double click and look for compare image comparer. I will drag this guy out, the final output and the original image, or well, actually the resized image into the image B. To compare the images, I actually have to run the generation again. Right now it's super tiny, so I want to drag this all out. And now I have the slider and I can compare what it is doing. So it is changing my face slightly. And this is talking back to retouching pass. So it's improving me. It's not so I'm not exactly the same after the, the isolate process, which can be a good and a bad thing. Usually it's more worse than good. To improve detail transfer, we can use a detail transfer node. I will plug in the output to the target and I will plug in the original image to the source. Then let me plug it into let's say image A, and I can also have a preview of that here if you want a side-by-side -side comparison. An image without the detail of, and the image with the detail. So let's press Control Enter. Here we have the comparison. It's kind of doing this high pass filter and sharpening you would do in Photoshop. The effect can often be too much. And we can control effect intensity by changing the blend factor. Normally, you would want to change the blend factor and see how it affects the existing image. But right now, the seed in case sample is set to randomized and it will always create a new image when I cue this. I need to change the randomized to fixed. However, what happened right now, our seed is already predefined for the future generation. I click on fixed, I run this, but I get a new image, a new generation, which is very close to the previous one, but you can see there's different window now on the right. What I prefer to do is to set it to increment. I'll start with one. And then every time I generate, I know the number it's been generated and I can always go back to that seed number I wanted to deal with. So in this case, I, if I go back to three, press control enter, control enter, I will always get in that third output. I go back to third and then I change it to fixed. Now the seed is fixed. It will not go and generate everything every time we change something in this last node. It will only generate this particular node and it will be very quick. It takes a few seconds anyway to update. And we can play with the amount, control enter. We can also make an image compare node just for the detail transfer. Control C, Control V. I will plug in this guy there, and this guy there, and this two can go away. Well, I can put this into the same image, so we do save the image. And let's just uh, compare the detail transfer from the original image original output, original isolate transfer, and what we get now. I recommend to use my upscaler workflow, and we can bring in some detail back to this. 
Upscale overflow is available in the description below. It's a separate tutorial. It's also free. You can just run it and go from 512 to 8K if you want. Let's do custom lighting. For this, I brought in Elon Musk. I want to load image. I've drawn these masks, which are available on my Gumroad. You can just download them for free. I will use these masks to relight the image. I can encode it VAE encode. I have to plug in our VAE and I'll put the latent into the latent image input at K sampler. I put daylight in the positive prompt and we are getting somewhat of that light direction. However, when masks are used like this, like super black and white, often the image can get out to be quite burned. I will use a round mask and you can see it's super strong light. You can also see it's affecting the eyes, which is something that happens. Let me change from fixed to increment uh, our K sampler. And let me run a few iterations. You can see how the image is super high contrast. To fix that, we need to use remap image range, plug in the image, and I will plug out our pixels to the VAE encode. I will also do a preview image so we can see what's going on. I will increase minimum range and maximum go down. Control enter. You can see now our light doesn't have that much con quite a big change. Now it's a little bit maybe too light all over the place, I think because it's a little bit too bright. I will go down to 20. And again, we don't get this real-time update that you'll get in Photoshop. We always have to run uh, the network to get the image out, you know, even the preview image of the remap range. Now the lighting on the image is a lot more balanced, though isolite is changing the face quite a bit in this case. The prompt with isolite is extremely important. So if I go with spotlight, you can see we are getting a bit of a harsh light. I can run again, see if we can get a better result or not. Getting what a different result. I usually will run a queue of like six, eight of them. I can change it to neon light. I run a batch, we have a few neon lights here. By the way, a little quick note, you can see this six number right there. If I click on that, we will be able to see all other preview images I had in this graph. This is a new feature in the latest uh, ConfUI. Do make sure you update the ConfUI every now and then. It, uh, they do add some interesting, cool features. In the isolate conditioning, we can change the amount of the multiplier. The default value of 182 is not bad. Sometimes it can go a bit lower to 155. You can see actually in this case, it doesn't do a better job. It gets it a little a little bit too dimmer. If I go to a 250, it should, to be honest, burn it too much. Yeah, it's starting to burn it, almost to a stylized effect. It looks like 182 is pretty good. We can also try alternative models. In this case, I'll use Photon version 1. It's available for free download in Civit AI. You can find it in my description. I'll run a few prompts. Mask looks a lot like mask. Sometimes we will get these black and white images. I don't really know why. If we try to fix it in a negative prompt and type in black and white, it won't really help it. It actually will make it very saturated. You can see the saturation goes over the board. I mean, it, it will keep it out of black and white space, uh, but saturation is crazy. I ended up just cherry picking the renders I was getting without prompting too much. Usually I'm quite minimalistic on prompting I don't like to type a lot. I'm supplying a few masks. You can try with different ones. Let's try another one like diagonal line. And here we are finally getting them with this four tone model. They usually will appear in the background, not so much on the face. And it is black and white again. It was pretty stubborn and giving me a lot of black and white stuff. But then it was kind of bringing the color back. Table Diffusion 1.5 and Isolite, they are trained best on 512 by 512 images. However, we still can introduce a higher res image even into this pipeline. I've introduced a higher res prop of my mask portrait. I will go 1024 by 1024 in the resize. The mask has to match. Mask at 1024 by 1024 doesn't do uh, that great of a job. Well, I supply 1024 by 1024 masks, but I, you can also use a resize node here if you want to just resize it. Let's try and run this generation and see what we get. The result is not too bad. I was getting worse at this uh, attempting at 1024. It is getting a bit burnt. It is getting a little bit more stylized, but we are getting a higher quality image. So it might be a thing that you really, really want to get from the get-go because upscalers sometimes tend to change the image a little bit. They tend to uh, soften the skin in a plastic way. You might want to get out a 1024 image from the get-go. Another way to paint this light is to in-paint the mask on the image. 
I will destroy our old lighting setup, go to the image, right click, open in mask editor, say I want to just paint it on, on his face, I can change the thickness of the brush, this noir type 1950s lighting, you can see here we have our mask created, I need to turn the mask into an image, it doesn't give me any options, I will look for convert mask to image, plug it in here and then plug it into VA encode and let's run the generation. We are getting something, it looks very blurry, I think sometimes this happens if the mask is not in the correct resolution. I want to double check that we have a correct resolution on the mask resize. I will plug it in and let's rerun this. There we go, it got fixed. And the issue was that somewhere there the image wasn't adhering to the strict 512 by 512 properties. And if the mask size doesn't align with the image, it will destroy everything. A couple other tricks we can do. Uh, we're getting a very strong mask, so I want to bring the remapping node, plug it in here and draw, increase it to th th like 30% and drop the whites and I also want to blue the mask so I'll go mask blue from essentials essentials pack and we can see well we need to blur it before we convert it to the image so let's do that let's plug into the mask blurriness and there I can blur it I don't know to 66 so it will be very blurry I can have a mask preview to make sure that it doesn't blow too much or too little. Let's take a look. So you can see it just got blurred a little bit and let's connect this final output with from a remap node to VAE encode and now we can run this and get a softer lighting hopefully. For some reasons on this machine, and I'm using two machines, this one is a gaming laptop with 4 gigs of RAM and my other machine is a bit more professional, 24 gigs of RAM. My other machine doesn't make those black and white images that often, it mostly makes them colored, so it is, it is funny, it can be dependent on a CPU, you never know, and it can tweak the prompts to say like 20% saturated or 50% saturated to help the generation if you keep getting too many of these black and white images. IC Light also works on multiple people, so I generated this photo of a family, put a daylight in the prompt and run few generations. You can see at the daylight prompt we got interesting ideas. I also have this beam of light mask that constraints it on the kid. And in fact, you can type in a beam of light and it will create that effect, or at least it should. You can see we're getting some, well, a, bit, a bit of crazy light beams, so we maybe have to change the multiply on the IC light conditioning. But there is stuff you can add and be creative, so please try different ideas. It also works with landscape. So in this case, I have this photo, my photo from Australia and I tried daylight prompt, oh it actually was daylight prompt here, I was doing pretty interesting results, then sunset made it way too red and scary, and afternoon was sometimes would sometimes would swap the background sea with some landscape that wasn't there, or afternoon in this case was kind of doing a good result, so we kind of have to play with prompts and see see what works. Here you can see my upscaling workflow. I upscaled one of the Elon Musk's more successful images up to 8K. The result wasn't always that amazing. I do find that that 512 by 512 relit image was better. But if you need to improve the quality of the image, uh, we can run with this upscaling and still get some pretty decent result. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.